I'm speaking from uh, Fort Nacional. You can probably hear the uh, popular leaders, the movement leaders uh, behind me. They're chopping it up, different ideological debates about the way forward. Fort Nacional is a neighborhood in the heart of uh, Port-au-Prince. These are what they call corridoyo, or the uh, alleyways. There's a big struggle for hegemony in the different popular neighborhoods of Port-au-Prince. Um, the most famous neighborhoods of Port-au-Prince, Cité Solé, Solino, Cité Militaire, Bel Air, many of these uh, neighborhoods are controlled now by what's called uh, G9. Um, the G9. This is a federation of gangs who've united with the um, PHTK, Parti Haitien Tête Cali, the bald-headed party. That was the party when uh, Hillary Clinton put uh, Michelle Martelly into power. And now it's uh, Jovenel Moise. His five-year term is over, as stipulated by the 1987 Constitution. Um, so in this neighborhood, it's, uh, the hegemony is, is working class hegemony, is popular resistance. But in many of the neighborhoods that I mentioned, it's, it's under full gang control. And the way the government works in close cooperation with BINI, which is the United Nations uh, ongoing mission here. As we know, the United States and the United Nations uh, have had an ongoing uh, occupation and invasion of, of Haiti. Now it's expressed more administratively and through the training of the Haitian National Police Force. So many of these leaders that you see um, behind me to the side, we were just in the streets about two hours ago uh, when we were fired upon at close range. The National Police showed up. It was a peaceful rally with all of the traditional customs of Haiti, Ra Ra, uh, Musique Racine, uh, the, the voodooism music, and the, the chanting, marching style against Jovenel Moise when the police opened fire with different projectiles, uh, bullets, um, tear gas. Every day there's constant demonstrations, but they're not of the magnitude of 2019 because the gangs that control the neighborhoods I mentioned, it would be the equivalent if we were talking about Queens or the Bronx, if in all of Jackson Heights, the community couldn't come out, all of the South Bronx, all of Brownsville could not leave their homes, or they would risk being kidnapped by these gangs that are coordinated, financed, and armed by Jovenel Moise, by the government. So it's like an octopus with its tentacles across Port-au-Prince and the country. The opposition candidate, uh, Joseph Messin jean louis the opposition candidate's also um, a ruling class candidate. He was a Supreme Court justice who was dismissed by uh, Jovenel Moïse. Um, but right now, the revolutionary organizations, the left-wing anti-imperialist organizations, aren't critiquing him because he, because he could represent some type of limited reformist democratic step forward. So in the demonstrations throughout the past few days in Port-au-Prince, um, We've, we've seen the presence of signs uh, in, in support of uh, Jean-Louis. Um, there's a lot of signs that say Black Lives Matter. There's a lot of signs, of course, denouncing this dictatorship and the role of the Organization of American States in the UN. Because if this was Venezuela, if live ammunition was being fired upon peaceful demonstrators, if this was Ecuador right now, which is going through its own uh, challenges um, from imperialism, if this was Nicaragua 2018, we saw how quick the, the United States, the UN, the quote unquote international community, which is really <laughs> the antithesis of a, of a community. So the uh, US representative to the Security Council of the Na United Nations, Helen Lalim, and the US ambassador to Haiti, Michel Sison. These are the two uh, principal people responsible for what's happening right now, uh, a mass movement which has convulsed all of Haiti and in Port-au-Prince, uh, Haiti for so long, which has been a torch, uh, an example uh, for humanity uh, of resistance. 